What if I told you that on April 14th, 2024, something happened that made scientists at NOAA stare at their screens in disbelief? For 3 minutes and 42 seconds, Earth's magnetic field shifted. Not from a solar storm. Not from a geomagnetic reversal. But from something humanity had never done before. Within hours, the Pentagon convened an emergency briefing. The European Space Agency issued a quiet alert to all magnetometer networks. And across 12 time zones, physicists began asking the same question. Can a machine on Earth touch the sky? This is not about conflict. This is not about conspiracy. This is about the moment we realize that our technology, for the first time in history, has grown powerful enough to leave fingerprints on the planet itself. Let's start with what we know. Earth's magnetic field is invisible, but it's anything but quiet. Generated 1,800 miles beneath your feet, in a churning ocean of molten iron and nickel, this field extends tens of thousands of miles into space. It's our shield, our anchor. The reason compasses point north and solar winds don't strip away our atmosphere. Every second of every day, the sun hurls a million tons of charged particles toward us at speeds exceeding a million miles per hour. Without this magnetic cocoon, Earth would look like Mars, a frozen, radiation-scorched desert. So when that cocoon trembles, people notice. At 2.34 a.m. Universal Time, sensors aboard the European Space Agency's Swarm Satellite Constellation detected an anomaly. Not in the usual places. Not near the poles, where auroras dance. Not along the equator, where the field dips and sways with the solar wind. This was different. Doctor. Yuki Tanaka, a magnetospheric physicist at Kyoto University, described it in an internal memo that was later leaked to the academic community. A localized, coherent perturbation, symmetrical in structure, inconsistent with natural variance. Origin, terrestrial. Mechanism, unknown. In other words, something on Earth had just pushed against the magnetosphere, and it pushed hard enough that satellites felt it from orbit. Within six hours, Triangulation pointed to a source. The Jinping Underground Laboratory, a research facility buried 7,900 feet beneath the mountains of Sichuan province, originally designed to study dark matter and neutrino physics in one of the most electromagnetically quiet environments on the planet. But on April 14th, it wasn't quiet anymore. According to sources within the Chinese Academy of Sciences, corroborated by independent seismograph analysis from the U.S. Geological Survey, the Jinping facility had successfully initiated the world's first sustained electrostatic confinement fusion reaction at planetary relevant field strength. Let me say that again, in human terms. They built a star, underground, and for just under four minutes, that star had a magnetic personality strong enough to be felt from space. To understand what happened, we need to talk about fusion. You've probably heard of it. It's the process that powers the sun. Take two hydrogen nuclei smash them together with enough force, and they fuse into helium, releasing a tremendous amount of energy in the process. Humans have been chasing this dream for 70 years. Tokamaks, laser fusion, magnetic confinement, all trying to replicate the sun's furnace here on Earth. But there's another approach, quieter, less famous, electrostatic confinement. Instead of using giant magnets or lasers you create a spherical electric field. Charged grids accelerate ions inward toward a central point, like a valley in space-time, where particles fall together and collide. It's elegant, compact, and until recently, considered too inefficient for large-scale power generation. But what if you scaled it up? What if you didn't build it for power, but for research? That's exactly what Jinping did. According to a paper quietly published in Plasma Physics and Controlled Fusion three weeks after the event, the reactor, codenamed Tianmen-7, operated at field strengths exceeding 50 Tesla. For context, that's 500,000 times stronger than Earth's surface magnetic field. And it wasn't just strong. It was coherent, symmetrical, pulsing at a resonance frequency that by sheer coincidence, or perhaps by design, harmonized with the natural oscillation modes of Earth's magnetosphere. Dr. Elena Ruiz, a plasma physicist, formerly 
with the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory explained it this way in a podcast interview. Imagine ringing a bell. That's the sun hitting our magnetosphere every day, chaotic, random. Now imagine playing a tuning fork next to that bell. Same frequency, same resonance. Suddenly, the bell doesn't just ring, it hums. That hum, that's what satellites heard on April 14th. Now, let's talk about the scramble. Because when the United States Space Force detected the magnetic anomaly, their first thought wasn't science. It was defense. At 0234 UTC, the anomaly was detected by ESA swarm satellites. By 0251 UTC, it was confirmed by NOAA magnetometers in Alaska and Hawaii. At 0312 UTC, US Space Force ran diagnostics and found no solar activity, no CME, no natural source identified. By 0345 UTC, triangulation pointed to Sichuan province. At 4 a.m. UTC, an emergency briefing was requested by the Office of the Under Secretary of Defense for Research and Engineering. By sunrise in Washington, the question on everyone's mind wasn't what happened, it was what else can it do? Because here's the thing about Earth's magnetic field, we depend on it, not just biologically, but technologically. GPS satellites use it for orientation, compasses, obviously, migratory animals navigate by it, and our entire electrical grid is vulnerable to fluctuations in geomagnetic activity. We learned that the hard way in 1989, when a solar storm knocked out power across Quebec for nine hours. So what happens if someone can trigger that kind of disruption on demand? To be clear, there is no evidence that the Jinping test was intended as a weapon. None. But the capability itself, that's what the Pentagon had to assess. Dr. Marcus Holt, a consultant for DARPA, who spoke on background to defense news, framed it this way. It's not about intent, it's about threshold. We just crossed a line where civilian scientific research can generate effects that are detectable and potentially disruptive on a planetary scale. That changes the conversation. And it's not just the US paying attention. Within 72 hours, the UK, France, Japan, and India had all requested formal briefings from their respective space agencies. The International Geophysical Union convened an emergency session, and China, for its part, issued a brief, measured statement. The Jinping Laboratory conducted a controlled fusion experiment in full compliance with international scientific protocols. All data has been shared with the global research community. We remain committed to transparency and peaceful scientific exploration. Short, diplomatic, and technically accurate, but it didn't answer the question everyone was asking. Did you know this would happen? Let's step back from the geopolitics for a moment. Because the real story here isn't military, it's physical. What the Jinping test revealed is something that scientists have theorized for decades, but never actually observed anthropogenic magnetospheric resonance. Human-made vibrations in Earth's magnetic field. Think of the magnetosphere not as a rigid shield, but as a soap bubble. Thin, flexible, constantly vibrating in response to pressure from the solar wind, changes in Earth's core, even the gravitational pull of the moon. These vibrations happen at specific frequencies, called eigenfrequencies, where the structure naturally wants to oscillate. Now, Imagine you're standing next to a bridge. You stomp your foot at random, and nothing happens. But if you stomp at just the right rhythm, matching the bridge's natural frequency, you can make the whole thing sway. That's resonance. And it's everywhere in physics. Wine glasses shatter when a soprano hits the right note. Microwaves heat food by vibrating water molecules at 2.45 gigahertz. And apparently, as of April 14th, 2024, fusion reactors can ring the magnetosphere like a bell. Dr. Amara Okafor, a geophysicist at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, published a stunning analysis two weeks after the event. Her team modeled the Jinping reactor's magnetic signature and overlaid it with real-time magnetosphere data. The match was almost perfect. What we're seeing, and she wrote, is not brute force. It's finesse. The reactor's oscillation frequency aligned with the second harmonic mode of the outer magnetosphere. It didn't push the field, it played it. 
And here's where it gets eerie. During those 3 minutes and 42 seconds, aurora activity spiked, not just near the poles, but in mid-latitude zones, where auroras almost never appear. Photographers in northern Montana captured shimmering green curtains on the horizon. A research station in southern New Zealand recorded faint red glows. Even amateur radio operators noticed something off. Signal propagation patterns shifted, as if the ionosphere itself was ringing. One operator in Ontario described it like this. It felt like the planet took a breath. And maybe in a way it did. So what does this mean for us? Not in a political sense. Not in a fear-driven, worst-case scenario sense. But as a species. As builders. As beings who have, for the first time, built something powerful enough to nudge the planet itself. First, let's talk about energy. If electrostatic fusion can be scaled, and that's a massive if, we're looking at a potential energy source that's cleaner than coal, safer than fission, and far more compact than tokamaks. The Jinping reactor occupies a space roughly the size of a high school gymnasium. Compare that to ITER, the international fusion project in France, which spans a facility larger than 60 soccer fields. But here's the catch. The very thing that makes this technology revolutionary, its ability to generate intense, coherent magnetic fields, is also what makes it risky. Not because it's a weapon, but because it's connected. Earth's magnetic field isn't separate from our technology, it's woven into it. Power lines act as antennas for geomagnetic fluctuations. Satellites drift when the ionosphere shifts. Pipelines corrode faster in areas of high magnetic activity. If we start building fusion reactors that resonate with the magnetosphere, even accidentally, we need to understand the feedback loops. What happens if 10 reactors operate simultaneously? What if a solar storm hits while a reactor is active? These aren't hypotheticals anymore. Dr. Li Shen, one of the lead researchers at Jinping, addressed this in a rare public interview with Nature. We did not anticipate the magnetospheric coupling. That was a surprise, but it's also an opportunity. If we can learn to listen to the planet's magnetic heartbeat, we can design our systems to harmonize with it, not fight it. There's something almost poetic about that. For all of human history, we've shaped the earth, cut forests, dammed rivers, changed the atmosphere. But this, this is the first time we've touched something invisible, something planetary, something that doesn't belong to any one nation or ecosystem, it belongs to the whole world. And that raises a deeper question. Who gets to decide how we use this power? Let's zoom out for a moment. Because while the world was focused on magnetic fields and military briefings, something else was happening quietly in the background. The data was being shared. Within days of the event, the Jinping team uploaded their full experimental data set to the International Fusion Energy Repository. 30 terabytes of telemetry, magnetic field profiles, plasma density readings, resonance harmonics, all of it, open access, and researchers everywhere started digging in. A team at MIT discovered that the resonance effect could theoretically be inverted, used not to disturb the magnetosphere, but to stabilize it during solar storms. Physicists in Mumbai proposed a network of smaller reactors that could act as tuning forks to detect seismic precursors deep in Earth's mantle. A graduate student in Berlin even suggested using controlled magnetic pulses to study the interior structure of other planets, a kind of sonar, but for magnetospheres. Because here's the thing, if we can affect Earth's magnetosphere with a machine, then we can probe it, map it, maybe even shield parts of it. Imagine being able to create magnetic safe zones above spacecraft during solar storms. Imagine using resonance coupling to study Mars' long dead magnetic field, maybe even reignite it, terraform style, centuries from now. Imagine detecting exoplanets not by their light, but by the hum of their magnetospheres. This isn't science fiction. This is the conversation happening right now in labs, conferences, and late night research threads across the world. Because April 14th wasn't just a test, it was a threshold. Dr. Alcafor put it best, we've spent centuries looking up, wondering if we'd ever touch the stars. Turns out, 
We've been standing on one the whole time, and we just learned how to make it sing. So where do we go from here? As of now, the Jinping reactor has not fired again at full strength. The Chinese Academy of Sciences announced a six-month review period, during which international observers, including representatives from the IAEA, ESA, and NASA, will be granted access to the facility. It's a remarkable gesture, and one that signals something important. This isn't being treated as a national asset, it's being treated as a planetary one. In June 2024, the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs will host the first ever summit on magnetospheric stewardship in Vienna. On the agenda are international protocols for high field strength fusion experiments, shared early warning systems for anthropogenic magnetic events, and cooperative research initiatives to study magnetosphere technology interaction. And beyond the politics, the science is accelerating. Fusion labs in the US, Europe, South Korea, and Japan are all revisiting electrostatic confinement with fresh eyes. DARPA has quietly launched a program called MagnetoSync, studying whether controlled resonance could enhance satellite operations or improve space weather forecasting. Even private companies are getting involved. Helian Energy and Commonwealth Fusion Systems have both published white papers exploring magnetosphere-aware reactor design. But perhaps the most important shift is cultural. For decades, fusion energy has been sold as the future, always 20 years away, always just out of reach. But now, now it's real, tangible, and it comes with responsibilities we're only beginning to understand. We're not just building reactors anymore, we're learning to be planetary engineers. And that means asking new questions. Not just can we do this, but should we? Not just how much power can we generate, but how does that power ripple outward into systems we don't fully control? Not just what can we build, but who do we become in the building? On the morning of April 15th, 2024, a hiker in the mountains above Jinping reported something strange. His compass spun, not wildly, not broken, just hesitant, like it was remembering which way was north. He posted about it online, a minor curiosity, a glitch, but to those paying attention, it was something else, a reminder. We live on a planet held together by forces we can't see, wrapped in fields generated by an ocean of molten metal we'll never touch, protected by a magnetic bubble that stretches farther than the moon. And for the first time in four billion years, something we built made that bubble tremble. That should humble us, but it should also inspire us. Because this isn't a story about danger, it's not about competition or conflict, it's about capability, about the moment a species realizes it's no longer just on a planet, it's part of one. The universe doesn't give us answers, it gives us better questions. If stories like this fascinate you, if you want to keep exploring the edge of what we know and what we're becoming, subscribe, leave a comment, share this with someone who still looks up at the sky and wonders, because the universe, it's just getting started.